The rise and spread of Islam are indeed very very interesting topic that we would understand today and here we would be talking about the teachings that have been given by Prophet Muhammad, the early life of Prophet Muhammad and what have been the concepts that have been established under the Islamic civilization that we would see. So if we talk about the life of Prophet Muhammad, he was born in Mecca. He received a spiritual enlightenment we would say when, uh, when he was in his middle age and then he decided to become a prophet. Later on, the people in Mecca did not favor him and he had to move out of Mecca to Medina and finally at the time he was on his close to his deathbed, his empire or his ideas were seen across whole of the Arab civilization. So his ideas of uniting the tribes of Arab civilization were very very interesting. Under his teaching some of the most important things were he believed he was strictly against idol worship. So no kind of statue or idols should be worshipped. Also, if any money is given, it should not be uh, lended on the basis of interest. He believed, he explained people that there is only one God and this was an act to politically bind the people close to one another. And he said that I myself, I am simply a messenger of the God. Five pillars were given which we would understand in a while further. So as we talk about his successor, so what happened as he moved out of Mecca, moving to Medina, his followers increased. So his successors were known as Khalifas. There were four major Khalifas, Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman and Ali, who basically spread the ideas of Islamic civilization to far off places. And later on, after the end of the Khalifas, Umayyads came into power who further expanded the spread to the regions of Sindh, Samarkand and uh, on, the e uh, on the west towards the region of Spain and France. Later on, you had the Abbasid dynasty that came into power and finally with the collapse of Abbasid, we have seen Turks and Mongols who came into power. So we would understand this again further in a while. Let's first talk about pre-Islamic times. What was the real journey then? So whole of the Saudi Arabia, as we could see on the map here, this whole region of Saudi Arabia was divided into numerous tribes. These tribes were working with livestock, pasture, or their small activities and each of the tribe had a tribe chief who was in charge. There was no common rule for law and order that was there. They were not politically organized at that point of time and each of them basically followed a form of politicism. Uh, they also believed in a little of Judaism, a little of Christianity. Most of the tribes were frequently involved in wars, possession of the land, gaining the power and the supremacy, mainly over the partial land, which was a scarce resource during that time. But what Prophet did or Prophet Muhammad did was united these clans. So they were brought under one political leadership. They were brought under one religious leadership and he said that all those who would follow Islam would consider themselves as messenger of Allah. So they gave the term, he gave the term Muslims or Muslims which basically means that people who have given themselves to God and they would worship only one God which is Allah. So that was the basic idea that was propounded at this time to the tribal chiefs and all of the tribes started to unite under Prophet Muhammad. So his teachings became very very clear that the followers of Islam would consider themselves as messenger of one God which is Allah and they are the people who have given themselves to God. If we talk about the life of Prophet Muhammad, as we said, it is very, very interesting. In his initial days, he was a trader and he enjoyed his life as a trader, but he got a spiritual enlightenment at a point of time. And at that point of time, he started to preach his ideas, but he was forced to leave Makkah because of his ideas and his act of moving 
out from Makkah to Medina was known as Hijrat or the year of immigration. However, later he established the Hijrat or the uh, Hijri calendar which is based on the lunar calendar which has 354 days. Uh, each of the month is 29 or 30 days in length and this was the first year, uh, the first year of the Muslim calendar was known as the Hijri. Uh, Prophet Muhammad established his ideas to far and wide regions but later on his successors which were the Khalifas, the four Khalifas, the Umar, Usman, Ali and Abu Bakr basically spread his ideas to further uh, uh, far off regions and Abu Bakr became a new leader. So under the rule of Abu Bakr uh, there were various concepts that were spread to the regions outside the regions of Saudi Arabia. Now, Mecca at the time Muhammad, uh, Prophet Muhammad left had nearly 3,000 people living in with flat roomed ho uh, homes and it was basically a point for oasis where the camel caravans which were moving from one region to another used to stop and Mecca had a profitability because they used to charge a little fees from each of the caravan which was going across the region. Also this water had a fresh water source this region had a fresh water source which was known as Zamzam and there was a stone which was known as Kaaba and this Kaaba is till date considered one, considered one as the holiest place under Islamic culture. Now the next important thing that we understand is the five pillars of Islam. So the five pillars of Islam talked about first is the confession of faith that is there is only one God which is Allah the, which is known as Shahada. The the next is the Salat or the prayer which is offering namaz five times a day and afternoon namaz in the mosque every Fridays. Then next is Zakat or giving alms, giving helping out the poor people. The next is the fasting which is known as Siyam and this is part of the Ramzan uh, which is the ninth month of the lunar year and here a fasting of dawn to dusk actually takes place and finally once in a lifetime even if you are physically uh, if you are financially and physically uh, fit you should go to Hajj uh, you, you should do the Hajj or travel to Mecca as a pilgrimage and this is the these are the five pillars that were explained the holiest book uh, that they consider is the Quran now this Quran is supposed to be written by uh, Prophet Muhammad and who dictated the Quran was the angel Gabriel. So angel Gabriel is again important. Angel Gabriel dictated Quran to Prophet Muhammad who finally gave this in its final words. So what are the rules that should be followed? As we said no idol worship was entertained. A life should be a life of virtue and benevolence. Everyone should be considered equal as brothers and sisters and we must not lend money on interest. That was one of the major thoughts or the major rules that have been uh, asked beside the five, besides the five principles that we have explained. Now the spread of Islamic civilization is very very interesting. As we said the successors of Prophet were the Khalifas. Now these Khalifas spread to far off areas and uh, spread the ideas to the region. Now the region which we mark here is the region of Makkah Medina. Now as we proceed from the region of Makkah Medina uh, we have seen how uh, the things spread from this region to the neighboring regions and uh, from the Makkah where Prophet Muhammad uh, had his influence the orange area as you can see is the territory of the four Khalifas. After this, you had the Umayyads which further spread the views to the regions of Spain and France and further uh, in the east towards Samarkand and the Sindh area, in the east and in the west till the regions of France and parts of uh, 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 Africa as well in the Maghreb desert. So those were the 
ideas is spread, spreading under umayyads so after muhammad the khalifas uh, basically the four khalifas ended around 660 uh, ad and umayyads established their power the power of umayyads was established at damascus and after the umayyads we had the abbasids who ruled and they ruled in the region of baghdad and it was for a 300 period that abbasids were in power with harunul rashid uh, harunul rashid as one of the major leaders under the abbasid dynasties however later abbasids had a hard time with uh, the turkish invasion uh, the ottoman empire the byzantine empire and as well as the mongols from the east so from both the sides there was a invasion that was to be witnessed by the abbasid dynasty so if we move further how the things move forward was the umayyads as we said umayyads had damascus as one of the major centers of power and uh, most of the regions that were ruled were the mediterranean region of africa the regions of uh, sind central asia were part of the umayyad dynasties and each of the area that they annexed was given to the governors so governors were in charge of the developments in those areas so umayyad dynasties which had its uh, major headquarter at Damascus was later moved to Abbasids and Abbasids who ruled for more than 300 years had the capital as Baghdad. They were known for developments in the field of geometry, um, algebra, scientific development, calligraphy and uh, Harun al Rashid. Harun al Rashid was one of the major leaders under the Abbasid rule. Arabian Nights are again some of the major stories that have have been propagated and explained under the Abbasid period and after the Abbasids as we have seen there was an invasion of the Ottoman uh, Turks and the Mongols and there was the end of uh, the Abbasids. Abbasids lasted for more than 300 years uh, during that time. If we talk about the achievements of Arab civilization, indeed there are numerous achievements. We had scholars like Omar Khayyam whose Rubiyat has been world famous. Then we had scholars like Muhammad al-Razi, we had Ibn Sina as some of the scholars. Developments in algebra were seen predominantly geometry was developed. Uh, we had seen developments in astronomy during that time and numerous other developments were seen. Uh, also, Arabs were unique because they assimilated the cultures from the nearby regions. So the culture of Chinese people, the culture of Greek people, the culture of Persian people were assimilated under the Arab civilization. And as we said, Omar Khayyam's Rubiyat is one of the major works. Also during the time of Arab civilization, we have seen developments in calligraphy. We have seen developments in the kind of domes and minarets that have been prepared. So those are some of the major developments that we have seen during the Arab civilization. In this session, we have talked about the life of Prophet Muhammad, his teachings and the spread of Islamic civilization which was followed by his successors, the Khalifas, later on by Umayyads and later on by Abbasids which was finally brought to end by uh, the Turkish uh, Empire and the uh, Mongol attacks that were seen. So that was about this lecture. We would be covering many more interesting lectures in history. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.